So Jesus heard the voice from the cloud, and so did Peter, James, and John, and said, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. May the words I speak become for you a word from God uh, to your heart. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, it's all been pretty good up to now in the stories and the life of Jesus that we've been hearing for about six or seven weeks. In church every Sunday in the season of Epiphany, that's the season that follows Christmas, we've, we've heard all of the great stories that talk about just how good Jesus' ministry started off and what a powerful figure he was. The one who teaches with authority. And things went great. Most of you weren't here every single Sunday. Let me give you just a quick reminder of some of the things that have happened to Jesus. Things that he's done. He healed the leper. And the, he told the leper not to tell anyone, but he told everyone. And after the leper was cured and he talked to his friends about it, Jesus became so popular and so in demand and so, you know, compelling a figure. He couldn't really go back into the small towns anymore. He had to stay out in the countryside. And the people would come to him. And last week, he did go back to uh, Capernaum for a time. It says he went home. And there were so many people around the front door that no one could get into the house anymore. And so someone brought his friend who had been paralyzed. There were four people brought their friend who had been paralyzed. And they really wanted to see Jesus. So they uh, climbed up on the roof and spread apart the roof. And they came down in the middle of the room. And he was healed and he was forgiven. Before that, there was a story of the man who, while Jesus was teaching in the synagogue said, I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. And he has some kind of a spirit about him. And Jesus told the spirit to leave. And he did. The man was made whole. And all these are story after story of healings and teachings and success and achievement. You would think things would just keep going and going and he would get more and more popular. And the crowds would get bigger and bigger. And maybe he would get to be um, a great teacher in the temple. Or maybe he would become uh, a rallying point so that they could throw the Romans out. Maybe things would get better and better all the time. And here you have the, the high point of this first part of his life and the first part of the story. Up on top of the mountain, after all of these amazingly wonderful, powerful, exciting things happened, the key disciples uh, see Jesus as a person who is full of light and heaven and earth have come together in one point and the divine light, a light so bright that it could not have come from earth, fills him. He looks radiant and the two biggest heroes and the two most important people in the whole Old Testament from generations past appeared with him. Moses, the giver of the law. Elijah, the great prophet. And they are talking with Jesus. And then if that wasn't enough, the voice of the Holy One comes out of the cloud and says, This is my son. I love him. He is the beloved. Listen to him. He's, he's the one. It's the culmination. It's the high watermark. It's, it's as good as it can get for Jesus. But now, it also happens to be the beginning of the end. It's the turning of the page. Now they come down the mountain. And now he heads to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And now things go downhill, not just metaphorically, 
not just really, but metaphorically and really too. So from this high point, after all the success, all the achievement, all the fame, all the good things, all the power, now he, he heads out back on the road and we begin the season of Lent and the stories change as we remember how Jesus' life changed. Now he's on the road and he says, well, I'm on the road and I have no place to lay my head. And my disciples don't understand what I'm teaching them. He's going to end up in the temple arguing with the authorities and with the people in the temple. Conflict and argument. He'll end up back in the garden by himself when all of his friends fall asleep and they leave him. And then he'll end up on the cross. So this is the high point at the end of this season of Epiphany. At this point in Jesus' life, it's the high point, but it's also the beginning of the downward slide of the time when we're not successful, when he is not successful, when the crowds turn against him, when everything goes south and he is in more conflict and more problems and more pain until he dies. So this is the pinnacle of the story. It's the, it's the pivot point in the life of Jesus. And I think of it sometimes, you can look at the story from two points of view. I can think of it from the point of view of the disciples. It says, almost as if Moses and Elijah and God are all endorsing Jesus, so to speak, and the disciples are there to see it. On the other hand, I look at it from Jesus' point of view. I think it's important for Jesus to remember and to know and to ingrain and to stamp into his very being this event on the mountain for his own well-being, for his own sake. He will need to remember this day as he goes forward. He'll need to remember how he is in the lineage of Moses and Elijah how they are with him in his life and in his struggles. He'll need to remember that he is the one from above and beyond and the divine light shines through him. He'll need to remember the voice that came from the cloud that says, you are my son, I love you, or you are the beloved. Because when he's on the road and things don't go well, he'll need to remember. When he ends up in the garden alone, he will need to remember. When he ends up in the temple and he's arguing with the authorities and the power much greater than his, he will need to remember the mountain. And when he's on the cross, he will need to remember then more than ever. You are my son. I love you. Moses and Elijah are with you. You are the one full of light. So I wanted to translate this back for you all and for me too. There are many times in our lives things go well. Things are easy. Things come with hardly even trying. It's your lucky day. It's your good day. It's full of blessing and light and your friends are around you and things are going so well. You've got a job and your family's doing well. Uh, your goals are being achieved. Uh, you feel good about yourself. You feel good about the, your life. It's not in those times when you need to remember who you are. Life goes pretty well then time when you and I need to remember who we are is when things go south, when things get harder, when you're not achieving what you wanted, 
when the struggle is really close and it's really hard and you're not sure if you can do this or you're not sure if you're going to win or achieve or move forward. When, it's, when the game is in doubt, when you're on the road, when you are in the garden, when you are in the temple, when you end up on the cross, that's the time for me and you to remember who you are. You and I, like Jesus, you are beloved. You are one of God's chosen. You are the vehicle through which God light shines. You are the one who has the saints praying with you and walking with you. Moses and Elijah and all the saints before. They walk with you. So, the season of Epiphany is coming to a close. It represents all of the high points and the good points in the life of Jesus. And in our lives as well. There are good times, easy times, successful times. When you don't have a care in the world and life's going your way. But there will also come the times when you and I will come against struggle and conflict. When things will not just fall into your lap. When it's going to be really close as, as to whether or not you make it. When it's going to be hard. When you're in the garden, your own garden. When you're on the road and your friends don't understand you. When you're in conflict with powers greater than yourselves and they might win. Or when you're on the cross yourself. As the colleague says, we will all have to bear our cross. That's the time to remember. The most important time to remember who you are. To be centered and grounded and how much of a child of God you are. A child of light. A child of goodness. Your home, your ultimate destiny is not just here. You have a higher place to go. With Moses and Elijah and all the saints. But as you walk through this world. And as you walk through your garden. And on your cross. And in your temple. And down your road. Remember who you are always. Remember, you indeed are beloved. You are the chosen of God. You are full of light. You have a destiny bigger than just this world. Because it's easy to be a faithful Christian when life is pretty good. When life's going your way. But when you end up in the season of Lent... When your life is in the season of Lent, that's the time you must hold on fast to who you really are. Know who you really are and remember you are loved by God always, even in Lent. Remember who you are always.